Future Center is the CEO of Follicom, Jan Alenfall. Welcome, Jan, and take it away. Thank you so much. So Follicom is a small semi-virtual company working with peptides uh, that comes from uh, our own protein. So a peptide is a small fragment of a large protein. Um, these peptides have several advantages in um, clinical or pharmacological development because they are endogenous, meaning that they are potentially safe, but they are also very potent. If you have a very small peptide, that can be uh, quite uh, a low cost of that. And in our case, we work with tissue repair peptides. And the latest years, um, these uh, peptides have increased interest from both the pharmaceutical industry and a lot of market approvable peptides have been uh, on a uh, set to the market uh, recent years. So, um, as I said, we work with tissue repair peptides. So if you have a damaged tissue or a damaged organ, that could lead to a disease. For example, if you have a wound on the skin that doesn't heal, it's a hard to heal wound, or for example, also diabetic uh, foot ulcer, that could lead to problems. There are also many other uh, damages to the body that could uh, lead to uh, a disease, like, for example, cardiovascular disease or psoriasis. In our case, we have focused on um, alopecia, meaning hair loss, and also diabetes. And um, if we uh, focus on hair loss or alopecia or male pattern baldness, um, this is a quite uh, huge uh, problem today, both for females and males. And this could lead potentially to psychological problems. And uh, if you think about women, maybe that's more traumatic to women to have uh, significant hair loss. There are only two products on the market, and these are old products. They've been around since the uh, 1980s or so. And the problem with them is that they, don't, uh, they are not really effective and they are also uh, associated with a number of adverse events that limits the use. Um, the response also is quite limited because not all patients uh, respond to the treatment, it's only about one third. So if you look at the number of patients in the US suffering from alopecia, you can see that a huge number of both males and females. And the problem is that about 90% of these patients, they don't have adequate treatment, even though there are products on the market. And for some reason, these people don't try them. And I guess that also is an indication that these products are not really good, either efficacy or safety problems. Despite that, on the global alopecia market is estimated to be around 3 billion euros. So this is a huge market, but there is also a possibility to expand the market if uh, there is a good product developed and launched in the future. So <clears throat> what we have seen in our preclinical and clinical uh, studies so far is that FOL005 can potentially activate the hair follicle growth and the follicles in skin. They can repair the, the, uh, the, uh, the the, the damage to the tissue, to the follicle, and activate the hair growth. If you add FOL005 to the tissue, you can actually activate the hair growth, and then that potentially could lead to an increased hair growth, and then the problem is, is gone. So what we have been doing also the uh, latest years is to develop a topical formulation that is suitable for uh, the peptide, actually stabilizes the peptide so the product can be uh, in room temperature for more than two years which is a huge advantage because this will be a product that people are uh, taking on a um, daily basis uh, in their homes. So what we have seen in the previous clinical trial is, uh, is, is a response in line with the existing products on the market. We have seen that in a shorter period of time than the ex uh, existing products. We have also seen um, no adverse events at all, so this, this product seems to be very safe. And with the mode of action, we think also that this product can be used for both males and females. But also one important factor is that the response rate is very, very high compared to the existing products. And this is what we hope to achieve with the ongoing clinical trial. Uh, so this trial now we have ongoing in Germany. It's uh, going on in three uh, different uh, clinical sites. We have now enrolled all the patients in the trial. It's over 200 patients enrolled and none of the patients um, has dropped out, which is uh, a good sign, we think. It's, of course, controlled, double-blind, randomized uh, study. And what we look for um, <clears throat> in the first case is, of course, safety profile and tolerability, because this is the first trial with the topical formulation we have done. 
We also look for efficacy, like the growth uh, number of uh, hairs per square centimeter. We look for dose response. We look for anagen phase, the, the number of follicles in the growth phase, and also the number of follicles in the resting phase. And the vellus, the, the small um, unpigmented hair follicles or the hairs are also being assessed. And this is being assessed with a photographic technique, so it is not um, biased by any individual um, person that counts these hairs. And what also is good in this case is that we have only really um, safety studies to uh, support the three-month treatment. But thanks to the preclinical and clinical safety profile, the authorities in Germany gave us um, an extra month's treatment. And we hope that the results will be communicated during spring next year. Then, uh, then you can compare, of course, the product with the existing products on the market or with some products in the pipeline. And we have several advantages over those products. And maybe the most uh, important uh, thing for us is really that we have a long patent life. Uh, if this product will be successful, it is protected until 2040 with potential um, uh, extensions. So this is a really great achievement, we think. The other product we have is in diabetes. And you can think of diabetes and hair loss as quite different indications, but it's actually so there's a biological connection. Hair follicle needs insulin to be able to grow hair. And there are also other connections in, in diabetes. I don't need to tell you about diabetes, it's a huge problem. And there are many people suffering from this. And despite good and modern treatment options, still many patients do not have adequate treatment. If you suffer from diabetes, most often do you also have a complication. And what we think we can contribute to this is that we have these uh, tissue repair peptides that can potentially restore tissues if you have diabetes. So in this case, we have exposed beta cells, the insulin producing cells in our body to high glucose levels resembling a diabetes patient. So the red bar is the high blood sugar level. And you can see that compared to the green bar, the insulin release is um, uh, compromised. But if you add our peptide, you can actually restore the production of insulin and you can also protect the beta cells from the potentially toxic levels of the high glucose. So by this, we think we can protect the beta cells and if you look into a tissue culture with um, these beta cells, you can see on the left side, you can see the healthy beta cells and you, you see a cell mat on the bottom of the uh, tube, the test tube. And if you add then high blood sugar levels or compared to a uh, diabetes patient, you can see that many cells are gone and uh, they don't look very healthy. But if you add the peptide, then you can protect the cells from these toxic levels of potentially high blood glucose. And that's been shown in the previous slide. So if we in then investigate what happens to human uh, islets, so these are people that um, donated their pancreas. And from the pancreas, we have isolated the Langerhans islets wherein the beta cells uh, are located. You can also see the same picture here that adding our peptide, the blue bar, actually increases the insulin secretion and protects the beta cells on par or even better than a, a, a competitor pro, a product like a, one of the GLP-1 analogs. So we are, really, we are really interested in these effects. And of course, we now focus more also on the complications because this is only focusing on the beta cells themselves in the pancreas. And that's the first step to protect them. But also we would like to investigate um, other effects on the complications. So this slide is just a summary of all the positive effects we have seen on the cellular levels. We have seen, for example, increased insulin production, insulin release, reduced uh, cell death, increased viability and so on, which is important for uh, the diabetes patients, both type 1 and type 2. And we have also seen effects in um, uh, mouse models, where we have seen a reduction on HbA1c levels, which is a marker for uh, um, blood glucose homeostasis, and of course also a reduction in plasma glucose. And next steps for us is really to create um, two distinct projects, which have uh, they, they should both have uh, a value for uh, Big Pharma, because we cannot develop them further ourselves. We can take them into a clinical stage, but we cannot develop them until um, uh, market launch because that's too complicated and costly. But we have so far shown that we have been able to develop and produce peptides with interesting effects, both in the hair, alopecia field, 
but also in the diabetes and its complications field. For the alopecia part, we have um, a formulation that is unique, that enables uh, the product to be stable in room temperature and allows for the patients to treat themselves very easy in their homes. So, of course, we have many other peptides uh, in our uh, pipeline. We do not do any development actively on those, but if we are successful in developing these two projects, we can potentially develop further uh, peptides uh, for uh, other or similar medical indications. And this is, in our minds, a good solid foundation for good opportunities for commercial agreements, should, for example, the alopecia trial in the spring be successful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. That was perfectly timed. <laughs> uh, I wanted to start by asking a little bit about the funding. Mm -hmm. In this uh, latest round of financing, you went for a directed share issue. Why? Yes. So, <clears throat> in the first instance, we wanted to broaden our uh, owners, investor base, mm -hmm. uh, because we also, uh, then that, that, that is not a secret, that we needed to um, raise more funds to be able to secure the further progress in our, in our company, both the alopecia, but also the diabetes project. So we decided to do that. Uh, and we have actually uh, managed to um, get interest from, from many new owners. And this is good for us. And which also means that we now have sufficient funding to continue with the alopecia trial. And also, if it's successful, also to do and initiate the partnering process, which we have lined up so far. I mean, we all prepared for, for this, of course. Of course. Um, turning to a topic that's hard to avoid these days, the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. How do you expect that, or has it in any way already affected your clinical trials? Yes, in, in, in the spring we had to, uh, to halt the trial for a period, but we restarted it in the summer. And now it's going very well. As I said, we have now more than 200 patients enrolled, no dropouts. And uh, we have been in every week or, or several times a week in contact with the uh, clinics. Mm -hmm. And at the moment in Germany, the situation is, um, exactly. you could say, more or less stable, but so far we have no indications that it will be any difficult, difficulties in completing the trial. Mm -hmm. So this is really good. And also, uh, a majority of the patients, they have already been treated for a long period of time. So we just hope that we can um, finish the treatment. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, hopefully that will have good results in the end. And finally then, let's talk strategy. Mm -hmm. What is your strategy for the US market like? So uh, for the alopecia project, our strategy is to um, engage uh, a part with a partner that take care of the US market, also the European market. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot uh, go into the US market ourselves. That's too costly and complicated. So we need a partner. And uh, this is what we hope to do in the next year, mm -hmm. uh, to partner with um, our first choice would be a global partner, but if that's not um, possible, we will have a, a local partner or a regional partner in, in the US. Mm. And the US is the biggest market, of course, so that's mm. most important for us. Yeah. So that's one of your milestones for, for 2021. Is there anything else in terms of milestones for the next year that you would like to, to So share? Yeah, so the, the, the readout or the top line data for the, for the hair study is, of course, the most important one, and that's the closest one we have also. And uh, then I'm sure that we will have interesting data to, to um, publish or, or uh, to communicate for the diabetes program. Mm. Of course, yeah. Mm. Well, we look forward to that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you so much.